Beasley and Kevin Durant as the only three other players to get that twofer as the rookie of the year and the player of the year in the Big 12. So this semifinal is underway. Who plays Texas tomorrow night in the Big 12 championship game? It's either the Pokes or the Bears. Butler tries to get things started. That's off the mark. And Caleb Boone has his first rebound. This team is used to playing without Mike Lee, who will come off the bench tonight, and Kate Cunningham. The young players have grown up, and we've seen it even as uh, late as yesterday. Moncrief to Anderson. Offensive rebound. And laying it back up and in for the game's first points is in, in, in a Moncrief. Well, you know how hard Vital plays, and Moncrief brings the same energy, only a freshman from Toronto. ACOT. His three point shooting has been red hot for the past couple of weeks, and he starts it off tonight with a triple. This is the best three point shooting team in the country, and the best Scott Drew's ever had. Anderson with a finger roll. That floats off the rim, it's knocked out of bounds. And boy, it must be really comforting to be a head coach and know that these guards, when they are open, they're going to knock it yeah. down. Macy Oteague is now 14 of his last 23 <laughs> from behind the arc for Scott Drew, who's done an amazing job with this program. Little zone now. Let's see what they're in. It, look, it looks like they're matching up, pointing, talking, again, trying to keep Baylor off rhythm. Nice pass. Vital. It's the layup. Second chance. And they make it count as Butler buries a three. They make you pay because they've always hit the offensive glass extremely hard. One of their strengths. This year on the kickout, it's murder if you leave that three ball open. Cunningham with a size advantage on Davion Mitchell, but not much else as Mitchell is the player of the year defensively in the Big 12. Here's Cunningham for three. Lothamba pulls it down. Saved by Mitchell. Butler's got it. He'll drive it. He'll score it. Smooth. The problem is on all those drives, those guards can find the open man, and so you've got to guard both the driver and his teammates. Caleb Boone traveled, pressured in the lane, and shuffled his feet. Well, the future is very bright with Mike Boyden on the sideline. It's hard to believe it's already his fourth season at Oklahoma State, but he has taken this program to the verge of the Big 12 championship game, and I think they feel like it's in really good hands. Well, it's Eddie Sutton's birthday today, and uh, this guy has honored the great history here, and he's done a great coaching job as well. Butler's floater is off the mark. Here comes Ice Likely into the game to hand it to Anderson, who was bumped by Butler in a foul call. One of the things you and I get to do, Bob, is watch these players develop over the course of years. And Avery Anderson, we, we saw it last night, we saw it late in the year. The sophomore guard has continued to become a really good player to the point where Mike Boynton told us today that he expect Avery, ex expects Avery to be a star in this league over the next two years. He had 17 and the win over West Virginia yesterday to get to today's semifinal. And he lit it up at West Virginia in Morgantown in the absence of Cade Cunningham and Ice Likely. But Oklahoma State got a terrific and unexpected win to end the regular season, beating the Mountaineers on the road with certainly their best player out and maybe their most versatile player out at the same time. Well, I agree. And the reason that happened is because throughout the course of the season, Cade Cunningham is such a great teammate, not only the way he moves the ball on the, on the court, but he inspires confidence in his teammates, and 
they frankly did for him what he's done for them all year, which is play for him because he came in here as the number one or two ranked high school player in the ESPN top 100. But he hasn't come in with that big shot mentality. It's been all about team and uh, focus on his teammates. And Caleb Boone had a heart to heart with Mike Boynton midway through the season. And the result of that conversation, him realizing he needed to take his game to a different level, that was kind of a game changer for the Cowboys this year as well. A little pressure now by the Cowboys. 2-2-1. Two, two, They'll usually fall back into a zone. And they're doing that now. See how they're switching off. This is what we call a matchup zone. Adam Flagler leans into a three. As he came on for Butler after Butler picked up his first foul. Likely, like a freight train. Knocked out by Chamo Chachua. Look at him run! I know look pass from Flagler. The Chamo Chachua sailed to no man's land, out of bounds. It's a turnover, but it's an early five-point lead for Baylor. This semifinal in Kansas City. They won the Southwest Conference title. This year, they won the Big 12 championship. The first time since then that they have won a conference title of any kind. Fran, it's hard to overstate what Baylor was when Scott Drew took them over and how few people out there thought they would ever become what they have become under Scott Drew. Well, in that first season, he was left with five scholarship players. They had walk-on tryouts. They saw a 6'7 kid walking across campus one day, and Scott Drew said, look, if you come out for the team and can make a layup, I'll put you on the team. And the guy said, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. But five scholarship players, and he called all of the players he could possibly reach this past week after they won the championship to thank them for 18 years of hard work and sacrifice. He doesn't forget those lonely days back in uh, back in 2003 and 2004 a little push off right there pounding Kate Cunningham Kate making his point and Davion Mitchell the big 12 defensive player of the year takes the charge and to a certain extent Davion Mitchell Macy Oteague Jared Butler even with all of this success that this program has had those types of players are still emblematic of what Baylor is about it's not like Scott Drew has turned Baylor into the McDonald's All-American recruitment factory as Cunningham goes coast to coast it's still players that are less heralded at smaller schools transferring looking to play at a higher level he welcomes them in and they might win a national championship well and more importantly Bob he went the All-American route and it didn't work well, here's a big move as Jared Butler picks up his second foul. Forced by Likely. Likely got the steal. Butler committed the foul. And now Jared Butler's got two. And we've only played five minutes. We're going to find out uh, about the depth of this team. Remember, Adam Fagler is essentially one of those three guys that comes off the bench that plays nearly starters minutes. The sophomore from Duluth, Georgia. Anderson, it's a three. His confidence is through the roof right now. 48 points in the last two games coming into today, as you mentioned, Bob. And it's always fun to watch the stars align and grow in this league. Flagler with a three-pointer that's way too long. Here comes Cunningham. He'll pull up. He hits a triple. Oklahoma State's got the early lead. Mike Boynton told us today that the one thing he did early in the season is encourage Cade Cunningham to continue to shoot the three ball. Meyer can't answer. The long rebound. Avery Anderson goes right at Mitchell. Lost his footing. A loose ball dug out by Meyer. The oh, acceleration yeah. and the left-handed oh, yeah. scoop by Davion Mitchell. Boy, that was outstanding. Look at this. Baylor's defense has, in transition has been poor, and you'll see it because Scott Drew, three straight possessions, the Cowboys have beat the Bears up the floor. Scott using that speed to blow by 
the Baylor defense and Scott Drew had seen enough. I like what I like what I think Oklahoma State's done tonight, and that is mix up the defenses. Uh, he's, this kid's so good. He's so explosive, Bob, because he has worked on keeping his hips to the basket. And so he doesn't ever have to turn and explode. He's already in explode mode. And now Davion Mitchell all over Anderson as Mark Vitals back in the game. He draws Cunningham. Likely. Bullets went along the baseline. It hit the baseline. So it's an Oklahoma State turnover. Ice likely playing center right now. And we got Vital yeah. muscling his way yep. right to the chest of Kate Cunningham. Ice can play center because he doesn't have to worry about Chamwa Chachua shooting from the perimeter. Cunningham no good for three. Watch how they retreat. Good hands by Anderson. Lothamba back in for Baylor. It looks like he'll replace Jonathan Chamochachua. And with two fouls, not true. We'll trust Jared Butler put him back in the game with 12 and a half minutes to go in the first half as he replaces Mitchell. Got to know your players. And Jared certainly now has to be careful on those drives. Butler stepped on the end line. He's coming off a seven turnover performance against Kansas State. And he's got a couple of fouls. And now stepping on the baseline here as he lost his balance. Vital on Cunningham. Avery Anderson step back off the shot fake. Here comes Macy O.T. Likely. Likely went down. Vital to the loose ball in the corner. Whips one underneath to Flo Thamba. Who missed the dunk but gets the putback? That's what we call a precarious possession right there. Mark Vital treated that ball like uh, like it was an egg. Cunningham. A little too much mustard on the pass to Bernard Kuma. It's an Oklahoma State turnover with Baylor back on top by three. And Kevin Durant as the only four to do that, Fran. And Certainly a list he seems to belong on with the year he's had this season. In addition to the tremendous talent and being a six foot eight playmaker, the thing that's always impressed me about Kate Cunningham is his tremendous poise and his BBI, basketball intelligence. He really understands the game. Good effort. This is what Vital does. He keeps possessions alive. Tried to bank one home. The back tap by Thamba. Look at the transition defense. Rondell Walker, coast to coast. They are pushing the ball, the Cowboys, right down the Bears' throat. Cowboys are almost in a hybrid defense, and it's throwing Baylor off a little bit. Likely rebounds the Teague miss. Ice likely. He's going to try to go right to the basket. And that time Thamba was waiting. I'd be concerned if I was Scott Drew because his transition defense is not good. Teague ran the baseline and hits the baby turnaround. <laughs> Butler's got Cunningham interesting with two fouls. Butler's fouled out of two of the last five games. So he's got to be careful. If I'm Mike Boyden, I go at Butler. Look at this. Uh, you'll take back. Yeah. Yeah. Baylor, Bernard Kuma banks home a jumper, but it still went through, and it makes it a one-point game. I like what he's doing. He's only a sophomore. He's very new to the game. Bernard Kuma at a Chad on the west coast of Africa. 
Flagler, no. Cunningham, bullets and outlet pass. Boy, they want to keep on running. Save. And likely's got it. Nope. Walker and airball. See, they're pointing and matching up. It's really a zone, but they're switching bodies off. ACOT with a shot off the window. All by design, Bob. We watch it every night. These kids make tough runners. The three guards, the three amigos, make 67% of their shots going to the rim. That's enormous. Cunningham goes to the rim. Swatted by Bamba. It's out of bounds off Macy O.T. Let's watch the speed of the Cowboys in real time. They're really putting it on the Bears in transition. And you see only one jersey back, and he can't get the stop. So Mike Boynton tonight has come in with an aggressive mentality, taking it to what I always call the bully on the block. In order to beat the best team in your league, you've got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and you can't play scared. Quick trigger by Cunningham. No. And Mark Feidel's got the rebound. Interesting talking as well to Mike Boynton about the fact he is concerned about Oklahoma State's volume of turnovers But still wants them to push he says you play with tempo and you get the ball up and down the court as quickly as we do There will be times where you turn the ball over playing like that. It's just impossible to avoid How do you balance that as a coach as likely weaves his way inside and that is followed by Keelan Think about football. It's almost like saying look we're gonna throw the ball down the field and there's going to be some interceptions, but this is how we play. And, you know, great coaches have often said sometimes a team that makes the most mistakes is trying to make the most happen. And I think that's the philosophy of Mike Boyne. You can't overdo it. You're right, Bob. It's a balance. Oh, that's nice. A block by Caleb Boone. Cunningham, Look another hit ahead. Rondell Walker throws it down. This Baylor defense is in quicksand right now. Look at Boone guarding Davion Mitchell. Love this. Mike Boynton throwing the kitchen sink at Baylor right now. You see the switch off. Teague over Cunningham. Elon Boone with a shot fake. Steps back. And Davion Mitchell with an outlet to Butler. That was an unbelievable pass Kate Cunningham just threw. Left hand across the court. Butler weaves his way down low, but Keelan Boone was there to reject Chamachachua. Every day John is not bringing it every day in this tournament. He's got to go stronger than that. Love Boone. Caleb Boone, jump hook, yes. <laughs> Around this league, Bob, they're in a 1 3 1 zone now. I have not seen a young team grow up more throughout a season than this Oklahoma State team has. We talk about Cunningham, we talk about M.A. Moncrief. How about Rondell Walker, another freshman at a mid around him? Avery Anderson there with five points to join Kate Cunningham with his five. And this is more than just a special player. This is developing into a special team thanks to his leadership. And he's one of the final five for the Koozie Award. So he's six foot eight, but along with Butler and Jalen Suggs, Ayo Desumu, and Colin Gillespie, Kate Cunningham is one of the final five for the best point guard in all of college basketball. So, Fran, literally, he is that quarterback out on the floor for this team. You know where his greatest, uh, his greatest impact at times has been on the bench. Saturday at Morgantown, he was the happiest guy on, on that bench because his team played without it. Both Boone twins continue to improve. Caleb Early, and when we look at this now, it's a 1-3-1. Boone at the top, Boone at the bottom. They haven't done this all season long. How unusual is it for teams that know each other so well and coaches that know each other so well to be able to throw a we haven't done this all season curveball at one another the way Oklahoma State is with this 1-3-1 one, one look? One of the, well, first of all, they played this defense last year. I don't remember it being played at all in Big 12 play, but Bob, good coaches will often save 
one or two things offensively or defensively, put it in their back pocket, practice it, save it for a postseason tournament. And that's exactly what they're doing to throw Baylor off today. Cunningham fed Caleb Boone. And he missed him close. The acceleration of Mitchell. And it looks like he's drawn a foul. Davion Mitchell, man, is he, he has some giddy up now. Great speed. Well, that was a foul on the floor called on Cunningham. That's his second. So now Jared Butler and Cade Cunningham both have two. We've only got five total fouls called in the game, but arguably the best player on each team has two fouls each. Teague from the corner. Good kick out. Davion Mitchell finds Meyer going back door. And he lays it in. Play. You all noticed this, but that whole play was set up because Jonathan Chamwachachua said such a good screen, sprinted to the basket, and he sucked the entire defense in. And two passes later, it ended up with a basket by Meyer. And Amon Creep double team out to Likely. Caleb Boone with nine on the timer. Goes to the baseline with the left hand. Meyer fights with Keelan Boone for the rebound. Scott Drew thought he was out of bounds, but the officials are saying that he reestablished. And I think a sideline warning was just given to Scott Drew by John Higgins. The, the rule is the player can go out of bounds and come back in as long as the ball is not out of bounds. Scott Drew thought that the ball and the player are out of bounds. If your momentum takes you out, let's watch right here. If you don't go out of your own volition, that's good play. You can come back in as long as you didn't go out of bounds on purpose. Scott Drew did not have an argument there. That is the rule. And now a Baylor foul will be called on Macy O.T. What I call that was great footwork by that Cowboy player. Avery Anderson floats one up, knocks it down. Did you see that jump stop? He didn't run Meyer over. He came to that two-foot stop and was under control. Davion Mitchell at the free throw line with an answer. Keelan Boom dribbled it off his foot. And winning the battle and saving it well, it was a good play by Davion Mitchell at the other end Matt rattles around and goes down for Chamo Chachua and now Mike Boynton wants a timeout of his own back and forth we go a one-point game a winner advances to play Texas you just want to try to confuse them a little bit if you're a pitcher and you throw a fastball and a curveball all year and then all of a sudden you're throwing some sinkers and they're not used to it. That's essentially what's happened to Baylor tonight. And give Mike Boynton credit. The coaches he's been around have always been changing defenses, guys. Eddie Fogler, Dave Odom to start. His mentors have always been guys who believe in changing defenses. And Mike Boynton has Kate Cunningham back in the game with the two fouls as Anderson knocks down one in the mid-range. Flagler floating left, floated right into Caleb Boone. More the numbers. outlet baseball pass from Cunningham. One touch to Anderson. I am shocked at how slow Baylor is in transition. Flagler and Chamwa Chachua never made it over half court while that ball was laid in. A foul called against Baylor. It looks like Chamba Chachua got a little too physical in the way. 
Watch the runouts right now. Again, you only see one gold jersey in your picture. That should, that Bob should tell you everything you know about this first half. Fast break points right now. Oklahoma State 13, Baylor 2. This Oklahoma State team in a win over Kansas at home, 37 fast break points. So they're nowhere near their season high right now. Avery Anderson. This time, Mark Vidal pulls it down. In the half court today, if Baylor wins this game, it will be because of the screening of the bigs. Mitchell, again, that one-handed, left-handed explosion to the rim. Such a smooth flip at high speed. He is unbelievable off the dribble with his speed. He's a sports science uh, chapter ready to be written someday. And they Moncrief dribbled it off his own knee. One of the things he's really worked on, Bob, in two years at Baylor, his hips are always to the basket. Watch his hips. See how he's squared up? He doesn't have to turn to beat you. He's always squared. And that little off-balance floater is like throwing a knuckleball at a shot blocker. Going off a wrong foot layup, wrong hand, is Steve Nash-like. Butler weaves his way through traffic. That floater's good. Last two baskets for Baylor. Great screens by Jonathan Chamo Chachua. This game will be won today by Baylor with their screening. Moncrief, back door. He was able to beat Vital. And Vital came away holding his right shoulder and arm a little bit. Trying to shake off some pain. Wearing the mask because two weeks ago he took a shot across the face from Chamo Chachua. Butler to Mitchell. Tom Chachua kicks it right back out. Unable to handle it was Mitchell. It ends up with Likely, but he can't convert. Bothered at the rim by Mitchell. That's that athleticism we talked about. That should be a foul. And it is on Avery Anderson. Only the team's fourth on Oklahoma State. This is amazing. Now watch Mitchell. It's a bad pass. And remember, Likely is a monster in transition. Great hustle. That's actually only the third team foul on OSU. Baylor in the lane. It looks like it will be dug out, and it is by Caleb Boone. But the home run pass, unable to be handled by Cade Cunningham. So getting aggressive that time costs Oklahoma State a possession. And that's okay, because you don't mind them taking those chances because they've connected on enough of those plays that they've got... 33 points right now. You see those two guys talking amongst themselves. We'll tell you more in the second half about that great relationship, which was forged on the USA Under-19 World Championship team. Back to the zone. There's that 1-3-1 one, one again. Walker out top. Boone underneath. Watch them switch off. Ten on the shot clock, 16 and a half. Maybe on Mitchell, taking his time. Now he gets going with three on the timer. He'll try a three. That won't go. Here's Anderson. Five seconds to go on the half. Avery Anderson, coast to coast. What a way to end the half for Oklahoma State. Fran almost thematic of what that first half was all about. You didn't for the notice Cowboys. this, Bob, but Avery Anderson looked at the clock at midcourt. He knew he had plenty of time, and then has taken huge advantage of this. Take a look. Doesn't hurt when you have two legit point guards out there, and likely in Cunningham as well. Baylor trailed at halftime by five to Iowa State, a winless Big 12 team this season. But that was their first game back after their COVID pause, where they went 18 days without practicing and 21 days without playing. Well, they've got several weeks of games now back under their belt, although Oklahoma State is a whole different level of competition. Let's see how they react in the second half. That's a good start. Jared Butler with a chance for a three-point play. 
He seemed to be saddled with those two fouls early, really didn't get it going, but now he can take the shackles off and get downhill a little bit and do some of his magic. This Oklahoma State team, Bob, in the last five weeks has beaten six top 25 teams. So Mike Boynton has had them, they, he's had them primed tonight, ready to go. Well, guys, Baylor shooting that 15% in the first half is a season low right now. And they are getting their legs tested tonight. As you said at the half, Mike Boynton wants to even go faster. I've seen a couple of Baylor players signal the sidelines, ask to be taken out, get a rest. Let's see how this pace continues to impact them and their shooting. See if they can get their legs under them to start the second half. There's T. Rolls a floater off the rim. Kate Cunningham comes back the other way, and there it is again. Even Kate Cunningham, who usually isn't the racehorse player up and down the floor, pushing tempo. Moncrie taps in his own miss. How quick was that second jump? He got up twice before Thamba got up once. Very explosive young freshman. You look out on that court right now, it's basically two freshmen, two sophomores, and likely... Mitchell throws yeah. it back to midcourt and missed Butler. So it's a backcourt violation. I don't think, and I've said this a couple of times already in the last three weeks, this is the same team before the COVID pause. I know they've won some games, but they're not as crisp. Running hand to Boone. Oh, it's just a pass it down and Flo Thamba commits the foul and it was a good foul he'll at least force Caleb Boone to earn it at the line this is a guy that was 170 pounds in high school they continue to put that weight and muscle on him we asked him yesterday be honest how much you weigh he said 210 we said 208 he said 208 Well, the Boone Twins had a unique challenge. Their home life in Tulsa has been up and down. And so when COVID hit and all the players were going to be sent home, they actually came into coach and said, we don't want to go home. They wanted to stay at Oklahoma State where they had regular meals, regular nutrition. And both guys really stayed there, worked in the gym, and got their calories up. It's very important as they continue to grow. They've put on a lot of weight since their freshman year. They don't look like string beans out there anymore. And remember, Holly, Mike Boynton offered both of these young men scholarships before they played a varsity game. And that's called projecting, being able to see the future when you evaluate young players. There's that zone again. They keep mixing it up, and they are confusing Baylor. Teague. The follow by Thumba. And a foul call. Bamba will go to the free throw line. The Pac-12 tournament presented by New York Life. Continuing with the semifinals at 8.30 Eastern. The number one seed, Oregon, takes on Oregon State. And USC, Colorado will follow. And I know Oregon's a team that's on your radar. Is you think that's a group that's going to make some noise as we go through March Madness? They had a ton of injuries early. They had a ton of transfers, as they always do. And now that they're whole again, Dana Altman does a great job of coaching in the postseason. He's one of those guys, Bobs, that he changes his defense possession by possession, and he really keeps good teams off balance. Avery Anderson now with three fouls. So Rondell Walker will come back in. Anderson, outside of the impact that Cade Cunningham can have, has been the best weapon for Mike Boynton. Over the past week and a half, let's see how long he'll sit in a close game. Cunningham, the cutter is Moncrief, the block by Thamba. Butler around likely. It's, it's almost like the three guards have practiced together a little bit in the gym, which they have, because they all have that same game to the rim.
Well, when Davion Mitchell and Macy Oteague were redshirting, they would go one-on-one -on -one every single day, Fran. So you're absolutely right. They know each other well in the gym. And when Jared Butler came in, they actually started something called Guard You. Every week they have a kind of seminar that all the guards and some of the graduate assistants get down. They watch film. They talk about how they can be better guards. They give each other feedback. So these guards, what is it? Iron sharpens iron. Davion Mitchell said, we're better because we're together. And Jared Butler told me, you know, we're so unselfish. They actually were drawing up a play for him in a game. And he said, no, draw it up for Maceo. I want Maceo to get hot. Because he said, think, he thinks that when Maceo's hot, when Davion's hot, and when he's hot, it really discourages the opponent. Well, Holly, it was a great conversation that you had with Jared Butler earlier today where he shared with you a conversation that all three guards had, right? With Scott Drew early in their careers when they were sophomores where and Scott Drew laid out what he thought the future for those three had to be for them to be successful. You know, th that's actually right. He sat them down and said, listen, all three of you want to score. All three of you want to touch the ball. All three of you have NBA dreams, but you're going to have to do it by sacrificing and being unselfish. And Jared Butler told us today, Bob, it's really hard to wake up every single day and not be selfish. It's something I'm constantly grinding on to have success not be just about me. Well, Butler with a nice feed to the post there, but Mark Vidal, a couple of tries were denied. Here's Cunningham. Yes. Failures to win tonight. It's going to be the screening out front to get Jared Butler inside. You saw the end of that play all set up by the screen by Vital. Baylor's guards are not getting into the paint tonight on their own one-on-one -on -one because the defense has been excellent. They're going to need the guys who don't score points tonight to get them free. Chachua and Vital. They got Rondell Walker for that foul, although it looked like most of the contact came from Caleb Boone. Oklahoma State by three early in the second half. The winner gets Texas tomorrow to win the title game. Moncrief missed at the rim. Chachua clears. Flagler, he's fouled. It's likely saying that Flagler used the arm to clear space. He wanted an offensive foul called. Instead, it'll be two at the line for Adam Flagler. Yeah, watch Mike Boynton. Where Mike Boynton is watching, he has a perfect view of the left arm. And that's why he was unhappy. On that sideline, he could see the whole play. And that's why he was upset with Jerry Pollard right there. And, and likely knows it. Flagler knows it. And so does... Likely the official knows it. He's still talking about it because he knows. And he's also posturing for the next call. Mitchell back in for T. This is the matchup you want. Cunningham and Mitchell. Shot clock down to 10. Ayla Boone rolls off the feet from Cunningham. A foul called on Vital. That's his first. Free throws when we come back for Boone to try and extend the Oklahoma State lead. The semifinals. And we are back at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship with Caleb Boone at the free throw line, Bob with shoes and Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe here in Kansas City. The number one seed and a winner of a conference championship for the first time in 71 years is Baylor. They go through the season with only one league loss. 
But they're going up against an Oklahoma State team that came into the postseason having won six of their last seven. And Fran, their only loss was to Baylor. So they were feeling really confident coming into this tournament. I watched that Baylor game last week, Bob, and it was not an 11-point game. The Cowboys were right in the game, and oftentimes when you play a team late in the season, especially when you're the underdog, you gain confidence, and I believe they did. And again, mixing up their defenses. They're playing some guys man, they're playing some guys zone. They're not going to guard the two bigs out top. So they have to become screeners. Kamachachua. No. Yep. Vital. Yes. Baylor's offense is best when they set those screens. That time, Chamochachua got to the rim and Vital cleaned it up. Now, they're adjusting on Cunningham defensively, and Cunningham's done a good job of reading the defense. Here comes transition, Bob. Off the steal by Vital. Flagler for three. That's off the front rim. There's Mark Vital again. Stepped on the sideline. Well, this happens all the time. Look at that. That's not even close. No, that ever since they backed the three-point line out for the for the college kids, they just don't have educated feet. In the NBA, Bob, you'll see it occasionally, but they know where that corner is and they adjust accordingly. You got to slide along that line. You can't one two into that catch. Davion Mitchell tapped the entry pass to Kate Cunningham right back to Keelan Boone. Shot clock down to seven. Likely drives it, flips it up with the left hand. Vital, another rebound, his ninth. Nice. He's open. Flagler a turnaround in the lane. Baylor's got the lead back. It's a great pass. We call that a baseline drive, baseline drift. As the ball went baseline, Flagler drifted to the corner. That's like waking up in the morning for these guys. It's part of who they are. Cunningham for three. Was blocked partially by Davion Mitchell. Vital looking for Mitchell back door, but it was kicked. Well, you may have noticed this super cool carbon fiber mask that Mark Vital's wearing. He took a real blow to his cheekbone. It was so swollen, they did x-rays. No fractures there, but they had to turn around a custom mask in just one day. They were so grateful to the Central Prosthetic and Orthotic Company in Waco for getting this turned around in one day. He has this cool black one, also a clear one, in case there's any rules moving forward that it has to be clear like the NBA. But Mark Vital really loves wearing that mask. What a spin move by Butler. And I'm not sure if there's any truth to the rumor <laughs> that Mark Vidal doesn't necessarily still need the mask, but it just looks really cool. You know what I like about him? They call him the villain, and we talked to him today. Both Holly and I said, wear the black one. It makes you look like the villain. And he uh, acceded to our wishes. Good pass. Wagner for three. Rims it out. Mark Vidal again. Blocked from behind. Out of bounds. It belongs to Baylor. 11 rebounds already in the game for Mark Vidal. And we still have 13 minutes to play. Watch him work now. Again, one of the things that Baylor does so well behind the scenes is they keep track of hustle plays. They call them 95% plays because 95% of the time, Vidal's not going to have the ball. Either will Jonathan Chamachachua. He can go get it if he didn't think he had possession. And they said he had possession. The 95 plays, Bob, are because they've convinced the team that a good player is only going to have the ball 5% of the time. So what do you do the 95% of the time? And they track hustle plays to reward guys like Chamo Chachua, Vital, Thamba, the ball movers, the extra passes. And Mark Vital in this program is called Mr. 95. It's amazing how many different ways Mark Vidal affects the game without scoring. 
To your point. Kate Cunningham uses the size inside. And he will go to the free throw lock. Well, what you want to do as a coach is you know you can't get everybody points and, and a recognition for that. So inside your program, you reward those kind of plays that help you win. We've talked about Elijah Harkless from Oklahoma, Marcus Garrett, Brock Cunningham. And that's a way you reward those guys inside your program. That's the point that Chris Beard made to Kevin McCuller, right? Yep. When Kevin McCuller was called a role player and... Chris Beard said, be a role player in the NBA. You know what role players are? Multi-millionaires. Exactly. Two-point lead for Baylor. Under 13 minutes to go. They're not going to guard Vidal, so eventually he'll be the screener. Butler, too vital. Butler penetrates again. Now it's Mitchell. Air ball. Vital is there. And draws the foul. Mark Vidal's a young man that grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana. When you think of Baylor and the rise of the program, think of Louisiana. Tweedy Carter plays Darius Dunn. Rico Gathers. He started coming to Baylor games early in high school because he loved Rico Gathers' game. Committed, you ready for this? September 2013 as a high school sophomore. Some people, as Jerome Tang, the associate head coach, rent to school. Mark Vidal, he says, bought, he didn't rent Baylor, he bought Baylor. Eight years ago. Yep. Back top by Thamba. Run down by Vidal. Deep from the corner. That was blocked by Caleb Booth. Likely. Avery Anderson. Threw it to nowhere. Thought he had a teammate in the right corner and threw it out of bounds. And now Oklahoma State wants a timeout. Cowboys a little discombobulated as Baylor has a three-point lead. Has anyone semi-final round well they're now straight to the championship as they will take on the winner of Baylor and Oklahoma State tomorrow 6 Eastern on ESPN that because Kansas had a positive COVID test and so Kansas is now done at the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship and Holly Rowe we're just hoping that Kansas is going to be able to cobble it together and be okay for the NCAA championship we were able to talk with Chaka Smart, and he said he found out about an hour before it went public that Kansas would not be able to play in the game tonight. He did bring his team to the gym here, and they went through a pretty spirited practice, you know, because they had an off day, so they were able to practice a little harder. They will, of course, be in that championship game, and he's looking forward to that. He kind of shook his head like it's a crazy year, but uh, they were anxious and happy for some extra practice time today. Well, Texas is a very deserving team, friend, to be in the championship game tomorrow, but we were really looking forward to watching that Kansas-Texas game next. Would have been a fun game. Texas, only the second team in Bill Self's 18 years to sweep the series, and I know Kansas wanted a third shot at Texas. Another rebound for Vital. 13 rebounds to go along with seven points. Holly and I asked him today, how many tonight? He said 13. He's ahead of the curve. Look at Likely. Try to dig it out against the defensive player of the year in the Big 12 debut on Mitchell. It's a held ball. And the arrow will give it to Oklahoma State when we come back. Down by five. The winner gets the horns tomorrow. It all starts. Special guests. Sports Center will start it off at 5.15. Reese and the guys will reveal... The NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. And the Big 12 will be well represented in bracketology. Ten teams. Seven are going for sure. Seven teams entered this tournament ranked. And likely floats one up. That's off the rim. As follow is there. Terrific job. He kept the defender on his back. We call that a hostage dribble because the defender could never get back in front. And that allowed likely to get to the rim and get his own shot. That's Fran for Schillip. I'm Bob Oshusen. Ali Rowe with us as well. The winner gets Texas tomorrow. 
Davion Mitchell, high finger roll, does not get the bounce. Cunningham, down by three, grabs the rebound. A foul in the lane on Flo Bamba. Tied up with Boone. And the reason that foul was called was because Caleb Boone continues to run the floor and get... Watch him seal right now. He Oh, that's a takedown. That, he, it, the reason that's a foul is because Caleb Boone did his work early and surprised Thamba by posting him up at the Big 12 logo. And likely with Thamba on the bench with his fourth foul. A little turnaround in the lane. That one goes over the top of the backboard. And are they going to keep this with Oklahoma State and say it was knocked over the backboard by Baylor? The one guy that gets a lot of credit for the development of Caleb Brune is Cannon Cunningham, a former post player himself. We know he's Cade's brother, but his coaching has really been good for this young team, especially the inside guys. Step back three for the top. Cade Cunningham, dead blocks is at 50. That's what we call a throw move. Perfect step back. Got to be able to create separation against a good defender. And you saw a textbook version right there. Matthew Meyer. Can't answer. The rebound. Thrown back in. Meyer in the lane. Right back to Chama Chachua. Teague in the corner. Yes! Matthew Myers got swagged because Cunningham laid it on him and he came right back, took the shot, and then got in the middle of that rebound to make the play. Rondell Walker gets his own miss. Chama Chachua pushed him up onto the end line and he stepped out. Chama Chachua made a great play at the other end as well to save the ball that was heading out of bounds that ended up resulting in the Teague three. Did you notice on that drive? Watch him stay vertical. This is one of those 95 points that you get that don't show up in the stat sheet but will be rewarded when they watch the film tomorrow. ACOT floats it in. High paint runner. Got to make that shot in the high paint because the shot blocker is in the low paint. Just makes sense. Foul on Meyer as he tripped up Avery Anderson. Take a look now. Watch this. Perfected by guys like Stockton, Chris Paul. Watch him shoot it from the high paint. Shot blocker's backing up. He's not running him over. He's not getting it blocked. And we keep talking about it, Bob. It's amazing how much work they've put in. Most guards in college do not make paint shots. They just don't. These guys make 67% of those shots. And three for Cunningham. Bounces off. Avery Anderson ends up with the carom. Cunningham, left of the lane. Oh, great. What he did was the double came, and the double didn't want to stay. The big guy dropped off. Once he got back with one-on-one, -on -one, he said, I can do this. That's six foot eight over a guard. Meyer bottoms out a triple. No conscience. He's got amnesia. Got to have it if you're a shooter. Cunningham's got 14. Cunningham with nine to shoot. Against the defensive player of the year in the league. Meyer saves it after it was knocked away by Mitchell. Two on one. Butler flips a wild one up. There's Teague on the follow. How about Matthew Meyer's quick hands, Rose? Mitchell first, Meyer to save. Baylor will have to win a game like this in a tournament when they go two for 18 or 19. Likely tripped up. 
Ice likely to shoot free throws when we come back. Defense, though, yep. starting to flip the script for Baylor. Matthew Meyer, the hero of the game in Morgantown, which gave him a title. First in... <laughs> well, Florida State certainly has that ability, but they have had a bit of a roller coaster of a season. Bobble shoes in front for Shilla Holly Rowe. Oklahoma State and Baylor in a tight one with seven and a half minutes to go. Ice likely at the free throw line. Oklahoma State now down by eight. Again, the winner plays tomorrow at 6 Eastern on ESPN against Texas for the Big 12 title. I tell you, you don't want to see Oklahoma State in your bracket, Bob. You got a great player. You got depth. You got size. You got shot blocking. You got confidence. This team has got seven wins over the top 25. The most since the Final Four team in 2004. This team has grown into a team that reminds me of one of Coach Sutton's teams. Butler for three. Brings it out. Likely's got the rebound. Anderson, no. Knocked out of bounds, though, by Chama Chachua. Taylor now four of 22 from three point land. And as, as lousy as that is, the silver lining is what I said a little earlier. You're going to have to win a game like this among the six to win the whole thing. You go back in history, every national champion seemingly has had a game like this. Right now, they're in, they're in control of 7-7 seven, seven to go. Although Chamachachua just picked up his second foul and Baylor's over the limit. So the freshman M.A. Moncrief will shoot a one and one only a 55% free throw shooter during the regular season Let's put it in perspective Bob Baylor is the best three-point shooting team in the country They're the fifth best three-point shooting team in college basketball over the last ten seasons And they are the best three-point shooting team Scott Drew has ever coached and right now four for 22 still leading over a very good team. And it just shows their versatility and their moxie that their go-to weapon is failing them right now, and yet they're still on top. Yep. And a lot of hustle plays, as we've seen. Meyer picked up his dribble. He's just going to hoist one up. Just about got the roll. As Kate Cunningham pulls it down. Rondell Walker. It's a three from the corner. It's a two-point game. That's the pass that has created confidence from day one when they played UT Arlington. If he passes the ball to me, I mean, he must think I can score. John Machacho got lost on the baseline. And Mitchell saw. For a guy that can average 30, and he could if he needed to, he's always looking for his teammates, and he's done it from day one. Avery Anderson cruises to the goal. And when Cunningham's not the man, it's been this guy, Anderson. ACOT. He answers. All of a sudden, Baylor starts to heat up from outside. Well, they know what's at stake. 48 and 5 over the last two seasons. Anderson tied up by T. Held ball. It goes to the Bears. Big basket on one end. Little breakdown on the other end. And every day John gets it done. And then Macy Oteague, who's been as hot as anybody in the country the last three weeks. Well, did you see the beautiful follow-through on that shot? That is a beautiful-looking shot from Macy Oteague. I asked him today who taught him how to shoot, and he said it's his mom, Barbara. She'll be very proud of that follow-through. She's always on him about it, and it was perfect in that shot. Mitchell off the heel. Moms teach us all the important things. Cade Cunningham. Yes! That's hard. You just don't know how hard that shot is to step back and still be on balance. Five 
have to shoot. Macy O.T. fouled by Likely, I believe, up top. That's team foul number six, so that's the last for Oklahoma State to give. In some ways, this is a game Baylor needs, but they certainly don't want to lose it. They have never won a Big 12 tournament title. They've been in the championship game three times and come away finishing in second. Matching up, staying in that crazy hybrid man zone, not playing vital. Vital comes up short. Well, they're baiting him to shoot it, and he's obliging. Avery Anderson shovels one off to Walker. Back outside, Cunningham. To the lead! C.O.T. A little too strong. Avery Anderson will push tempo again. Cade Cunningham. That one just a little too strong. Oh, Scott Drew wanted them to push it, but Butler had his head down, so they're in the half court. A reach and foul called on Anderson. It will be free throws. Uh, you'll for be Jared watching Butler this guy. Next. Bob, you'll be watching this guy for about 15 more years, and here's why. Over the whole season, playing at times without Cunningham, without Likely, and sometimes, as we saw Saturday, in that huge upset in Morgantown, without both. One and one for Butler, and he ties the game. That was Fran Fraschilla, I'm Bob Wischusen. Holly Rowe with us as well. Every game seems close in this league and in this championship. Well, we've seen it all season, Bob. It's uh, it, it's it's always been this competitive, maybe more so this year, actually. And we still have another one tomorrow. The winner of this game gets Texas for the title. No Texas school has ever won this Big 12 title. Likely goes down, tied up by Vital. And it's a held ball that belongs to Oklahoma State. Well, it says a lot about Cunningham that from the day he got to campus, he has just in, engendered great trust in his teammates and him and vice versa. We've seen him step up and score and make big plays, but the confidence level of this team comes from the fact that he believes every bit as much in his teammates as he does in his own game. Kayla Boone, spin move, shot fake. Oh, that's great. Finish. That's what we call a short roll. Boone didn't run all the way to the rim because he wouldn't have had a chance to get there. He connected with Cunningham early, and Boone is doing what he's doing, finishing. Davion Mitchell knocks down a triple. Avery Anderson to Boone. He is fouled. Watch the adjustments, Bob. We talked about Cunningham and his teammates. Watch Boone on the screen. He's going to open up right in the elbow. Stay right there. I'll get it. And now he's doing what he's done the last month and a half of the season, which is score. If he goes all the way to the rim without the ball, he never gets it. That's why we call it a short roll. Doesn't have to roll all the way to the rim. He shortens his stride. Almost like in football when a quarterback sees a blitz and he checks down. Butler was called for the foul. That's his fourth. So he and Flo Thamba both have four. Avery Anderson with four for the Pokes. So if this game goes to overtime, and it well could, it's that close and has been this way for quite some time, there'd be some important players playing with four fouls. You know what I like about both of these teams going into March Madness is they have depth. And so when foul trouble is an issue, referees from different parts of the country, both of these teams can survive that, Bob. I wouldn't want Kate Cunningham to get in foul trouble if I were Mike Boynton. There's that zone again. 
They've been pushing out on the shooters. Davion Mitchell. Yes. Can't stay in front of him. I always said with guys like him, if he's even, he's leaving. Because you can't get back in front if he's even with you. Anderson. Plus the foul! Once again, Cunningham got rid of the ball quickly, and the ball sung. Once the trap happened, he got rid of it. Couple passes, and then Avery Anderson getting downhill. Take a look. Watch him hang, absorb contact, and then finishes at the rim. This is 2,700 high school points, so he knows how to score. He only averaged four a game as a freshman. He had 31 last weekend in the season finale against West Virginia. 17 last night, 18 tonight. What a weapon Avery Anderson has become. Two minutes to go. Avion Mitchell sets up Butler for three. Cunningham's got the rebound. Oklahoma State with the ball and the lead. Vital on Cunningham. Tries to go around him. Backdoor cut. Rondell Walker lays it in. Extends the Oklahoma State lead. And a chance for three. Rondell Walker snuck along the baseline. Watch the drive downhill. You'll see him get by Vital. He's under control. Here comes Walker to the rim. Baylor turned their heads to watch Cunningham. And Rondell Walker, that's what we call a corner cut. Really simple. Cut to the basket. Mark Vidal called for his third. It's a four-point lead. Minute and a half to go. Davion Mitchell picks up his dribble. Butler. Good D. Penetrates. Lost his footing and threw it up into the net. Back the other way comes Cunningham. They don't need a quick shot here. Possession of the ball is valuable. Under a minute to go. Mitchell all over Anderson. Timeout called by Mike Pointer. 52 seconds remain. We'll come back in 30 seconds. Basketball out of this huddle. Not, what do you think? Not necessarily. A couple of times this year, because Cunningham is such a focal point, they've used him as a decoy. They can go either way because they have various playmakers that they've cultivated. But he's going now. Backing down Mitchell. And a reach-in foul called on Teague. All season, that's been a steal. And tonight, Cunningham gets a chance to make this a uh, two, three-point possession game. And during the regular season, he shot 85% at the line. There's nothing wrong with that shot, Bob. And you go back to high school and... and Mount Bird Academy early in this season as you watch mom and dad he's been clutch he's got 22 they are playing with no confidence on each possession maybe on Mitchell will drive it and draw a foul so must free throws you would think for Davion Mitchell he is a pretty good free throw shooter and that, that's an example right there instead of taking the challenge three get yourself to the basket maybe make both of these set up some pressure because this Baylor defense can press you Mitchell just a shade under 70% and he misses the first as soon as we're done here in Kansas City coming up next the ACC championship 
North Carolina and Florida State. That will follow Dan Schulman and Jay Billa standing by. Two misses for Mitchell. And now you have to foul. And they have no choice but to foul Kate Cunningham. 16 years ago tomorrow, Eddie Sutton's team knocked off Texas Tech. The last time they won the title. Vital hands it off to T. Is there one last breath for Baylor? Flagler for three. He doesn't get it. It's saved back into Anderson. Flips it ahead to Caleb Boone. Throws it down. The exclamation point. Foul in the backcourt. A whistle behind the play erases the dunk. But it is still a foul that will give free throws to Oklahoma State. So Avery Anderson goes to the line after what would be a bad break for the Cowboys on that foul call. Anderson has 18, so looking to continue to add what has been a tremendous surge of points that he's given his team down the stretch. Regular season end in this tournament. 20 for Anderson. Butler for three. That won't go. To follow by T. Not there. Vital puts it up and in. Cunningham in the front court. And the foul called on Davion Mitchell. Let's take a look at our player of the game. Brought to you by Phillips 66. And once again, it's the player of the year that gets it done. 23 points for Kate Cunningham. If you watch the game tonight, there's not much to say. He's been every bit as good as advertised coming into the season, and he showed it again tonight. thought this kid was an upperclassman when he found out he was a freshman he said you got a scholarship son if you're looking for North Carolina Florida State it begins on ESPN news but it's only moments away here on ESPN Mark Vital it's knocked away by Cunningham with a couple of seconds to go and it looks like it will belong to Oklahoma State it is all academic now Baylor the outright Big 12 regular season champions and the number two team in the country. They go down. Oklahoma State pulls off the upset. And the Cowboys take on the Longhorns for the Big 12 championship tomorrow. We hope you can join us at 6 p.m. Eastern tomorrow here on ESPN.